So you've decided to visit Sri Lanka and you can't wait to explore the amazing wildlife in the national parks. Now it's time to book the best national park in Sri Lanka. And you're probably going to think that it's the Yala National Park. But I'm here to tell you that there are over 20 national parks in Sri Lanka that go completely unnoticed and undiscovered by travelers. And this series is about showing them to you. What is up guys and welcome back to my channel. In this series and in this video, we are going to be exploring the lesser known parks of Sri Lanka, starting with Kumana National Park. The Kumana National Park is found on the southernmost part of the east coast and covers a radius of 350 square kilometers. It's best known for the Kumana Villus, which are now recognized as a part of the Ramsar wetland sites. And because of the Kumana Villus, you can spot a wide array of aquatic birds in this park as well. While you can spot the coveted leopard in the Kumana National Park as well, there is so much more that this park has to offer and we are here with Parrotfish Collective who have been doing some amazing work in this region to really show you what else you can see and do in this area. If you are planning on visiting the Kumana National Park, you will need to hire a safari jeep with a tracker or a guide that is licensed to enter the park. Unless you have pre-booked your jeep through an agent, it is best recommended to book this experience from the surf town of Arugambe which is the closest tourist hub and settlement to the park. This is actually a really great way to see the park because if you are someone who likes to be in nature, you get to spend the whole day driving around and not only hoping to spot animals, and that's a great thing you can do, but you have a lot of other things like the caves that you can visit and the river that you can have a bath in maybe. So there's a lot to see here. But my favorite thing so far has to be the fact that I've seen only one other vehicle in the park. So that's something really different to what you would experience in other parks like Yala perhaps, where you're constantly seeing other vehicles. This park truly gives you a sense of diving into the forest and being almost isolated in it, in nature. You can actually walk in this park, which you can do in very few of them. The park has these amazing ruins, such as this stupa that we see here that, like I said, predates Christianity. Now, this one has been redone by the archaeological department, but the reason why they were in ruins is because the jungle has overtaken them throughout the years, as well as they have fallen prey to treasure hunters over the years as well. So that's why this one had to be done. But it's very interesting for me to understand that there was a whole monastic community that lived here in some of the many caves here. There's about 20 that caves that have been rejected for sure, but perhaps even over 100 caves could exist. Something that we really want to highlight through this series are the people on the ground level who are doing some amazing work in protecting, preserving and educating all of the stakeholders that are part of our environment and our ecosystem. And so I really want you guys to meet Mr. Vinod Malwata. He's a part of Parrotfish Collective here and I'm really excited to ask him a few questions. I just want you to talk a little bit about the backbone of Parrotfish Collective. You know, what are the things that really create Parrotfish Collective and you know, inspire you guys to keep going? We are a collective of people, um, conservation professionals as well as wildlife enthusiasts. Um, and I, what we try to do is educate. We primarily work in creating content that uh, helps educate the general public. Our mission is to actually create as much um, awareness material to raise eco literacy rates of people um, in the hope that the more people know about the beautiful environment in Sri Lanka, the more inclined they will be uh, to protect you know, all, all, all the beauty that's around us. Uh, one of the first things we did here was designing a nas uh, national park logo for Kumana. Yeah. Uh, the idea was to try to, you know, raise the level of um, parks in Sri Lanka. Yeah. You know, when you, you look at parks abroad, um, you know, they've got their official national park logos, mm. they've got 
uh, something to market. Yes, and like um, a professional standard. Exactly. Yes. So we've done a, a, a number of activities. We've uh, done some visitor center materials. Uh, we did an educational guide mm -hmm. uh, to draw attention away from you know your charismatic species like the leopard or the bear. Yeah. Uh, there's so much to see as you saw today. Um, so what we're trying to do is actually draw attention to some of these lesser known species that are actually equally important mm -hmm. um, have their own story as well. We're at another interest point and this one is called the Boatta Galge. Interestingly enough, all of these caves have a drip ledge which is further proof that they were used by people and probably by monks as a place for meditation because the drip ledge was something that you can see all around Sri Lankan cave structures that were used by people. It's a technique that they use to make sure the rain doesn't run into the cave, making it an excellent shelter. And in caves like this, we have further proof of people actually living in them because there's actually inscriptions and drawing dating back to a very long time, thousands of years ago. So let's go in and check it out. So many years ago, this entire region was called the Rune Kingdom and back then there was no bordering of national parks or anything like that. There were villages that were part of the forest as well as people and monks who lived in caves such as this. So because of that reason, you have caves like this that have artwork and inscriptions dating back to thousands of years ago. But the really interesting thing is that within this same cave, you have inscriptions that are much closer to present date from the 70s and the 80s and these are written in Sinhala and in Tamil which means that they were from people who were moving through this area during the time of the war even using this place as shelter. So for me that's really interesting because a place like this has been providing shelter for many different kinds of people throughout time and so there's a lot of history in an isolated place in a park like Kumana that you don't even think about. I know a lot of people watching this channel are people who are hoping to come to Sri Lanka and who are obviously conscious travellers themselves but everyone can learn. So what do you think are some of the things that a conscious traveller can keep in mind so that when they come to Sri Lanka they are helping the other stakeholders be it the jeep drivers or the vendors to also be um, sustainable or protect the environment? Uh, I would say one of the main things could be is to you know bring some of the practices whether you live abroad or you live in Colombo uh, bring some of those everyday practices uh, here so you know it's a beautiful environment around us so uh, not polluting obviously not throwing any litter out you know if you use a reusable bottle already you know bring those bottles yeah uh, don't buy plastic bottles yeah. uh, avoid things like that and another thing I would say is actually telling jeep drivers because there might be this um, this notion that the the viewer here is here to see a leopard yeah so there's an idea that you the, have to you show, have up to show leopard a leopard or you so have failed the trip exactly yeah. so i think it's like sometimes telling and, and and putting not putting that pressure on your yeah. on your jeep driver to see a leopard mm. and saying look there's an opportunity um, i would like to see the other things as well yeah. uh, i've read maybe reading up before coming i yeah. think is a big one because then you actually know what's there yeah um, and then you can tell the jeep driver hey i've heard of this spot and mm. like can you take them. me there yeah can you take me there and like coerce them to take you to these lesser known sites and mm -hmm. really enjoy uh, the beauty that's around you yeah. and go away with a, a, a beautiful wilderness experience as yeah. opposed to you know just driving around trying to spot a leopard you mm -hmm. might be seeing beautiful trees mm -hmm. you know we saw some orchids today yes um, birds yeah. and just uh, also enjoying those little things I would say another thing yeah, that comes up if you know if people want to help is uh, donating if possible mm -hmm. to some of the lo local organizations working here uh, as you know Sri Lanka is really um, at a you know, crossroads in our journey and we, we've endured some tough times over the last few years. Um, so if you have the means of donating towards some of the lo great local work that's happening across the country, across our parks, yeah. uh, do that, you know, yes. like maybe mm -hmm. everyone put thousand rupees a month towards mm. some of these initiatives. Uh, what that could do if uh, we'll say 30 people did that that's 30,000 rupees that's that could be someone's salary do. or yeah. something like that and there's so many things you can do with that kind of money so just thinking of alternative ways of being how you can give back yeah. to the environment and that's a wonderful way to travel you know like traveling and promoting conservation uh, in a place is such a wonderful and conscious way to travel because now you're really like those days if you travel people will be like watch your footprint you know you might be ruining the environment but when you're a conscious traveler you're traveling and you're trying to look at the people who are doing amazing work maybe supporting them funding them 
maybe taking some of the tips that Vinod mentioned and using them when you're traveling here and working with the locals to kind of explain to them just how important protecting the environment is to you and so it should be to the person who is taking you on your journey as well. It is half day now and we are at the Kumbukan Oya which is kind of like the border between the Yala National Park and the Kumana National Park. And I'm really excited to get in and have a dip and enjoy this water while my lunch is being prepared. Now to be honest that is the highlight of the trip for me so far because I love camping and this is kind of like it because they are cooking out here in the shade of the trees and I'm going to work up an appetite by swimming and go and, and have some fresh hope jungle cooked Sri Lankan food and that's something that you can experience too I mean if you can't have your own meal cooked here something you can do is ask your jeep driver when you're booking them to take you to these places they can take you to all the places that I've been today all you have to do is ask them and you can even ask them to be brought here to Kumbukan Oya for your lunch break you can ask your hotel to pack a little lunch some sandwiches and some fruits maybe and come here relax and enjoy your meal because at the end of the day this noon time is the warmest time of the day this is when you're least likely to see too many animals because they too are finding shelter and resting at this time this day trip has been completely different to some of the other day trips i have done because i don't feel like i have been chasing behind an animal such as the leopard and i don't feel that disappointment of not finding it instead i found an abundance of new animals i've seen so many birds that I have been in all of the other parks that I've visited but have never been spotted and identified for me. So I'm learning a lot through this journey and that's, I feel like that's the kind of trip that one should aspire to have. The park is not just a place for you to come and find a leopard. There is so much more for you to see and learn from the plants to the animal and especially in a park like Kumana, the history and the archaeological ruins that are left behind. So it's a really wholesome experience and I invite you guys to come and have that entire thing instead of just the one aspect of seeing the coveted leopard of Sri Lanka. Now we've already seen and done so much I feel but it's only half day and we have another whole half of the evening part of this trip and I'm very excited because when the sun does start to set and it gets cooler a lot of these animals that are napping right now will come out and we will see more of them around the watering holes so I am very excited for an eventful part 2 of this trip. that I have never heard of, never knew existed and never seen. This is a village that is inside the Kumana National Park and it was evacuated in the 1980s. Reason being there was an attack during the war on some of the park officials and the government decided that they couldn't guarantee the safety of the people that lived within the village. Interestingly enough, when the park was formed, they were allowed to continue living in the village because they were so interwoven with the jungle. But afterwards, I guess you could say it was too dangerous to allow them back in here and guaranteeing their safety was an issue. So no one has moved back in here since then. Those people were moved to a region known as Panama on the East Coast as well. But it's very cool because you can see signs of life here. I can see um, a Buddha statue. This is the school building right here. This could have been a home. And there's also um, some interesting plants in the area. I spotted very uh, quickly some cactus that is growing here and it stands out because it's not unlike any of the other vegetation. And our tracker mentioned that they might have, the people might have grown it here in order to block off elephants or you know not allow them to come in. Very interesting and just incredible, incredible stories. You can see that the place has been used by perhaps the STF or uh, the army during the war as well. There's a lot of writing. I'm not a big fan of vandalism, but uh, the, the inscriptions that have been left behind after this place was abandoned also tell a story of its own. So it is rather interesting to kind of 
Have a read. because we have an entire series coming out on the national parks of Sri Lanka and we will be trying to get out at least once a month because these require a little bit more planning and free work than our other videos. So bear with us, we will have them out for you as soon as possible. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye! A special thank you to our patrons for your continued support. If you'd like to empower us to create more impactful stories like this, then consider joining us over at Patreon.